Welcome to my virtual world. I'm Marie and it's so lovely to be with you. A sturdy chair can be such a fantastic tool for a yoga practice. Everyone has access to a chair. And although we spend way too much time sitting a little creative chair yoga to break up long periods spent sat at a desk can go a long way to releasing tensions and bringing balance. Like wall yoga, chair yoga knows no bounds. With a little creative license, the possibilities are endless. Even after 43 years practicing yoga, I still see new ways of working with a chair to aid a yoga pose. The session today will allow you to work slightly differently with the postures and hopefully bring you understanding and ease. It is just a little taste of the possibilities, but hopefully it will encourage you to break up long periods of sitting by doing a few stretches without even leaving your chair. Consciously making small changes to your daily routine, like pausing to stretch hourly, can add up to a major positive shift in your health and quality of life. Remember, little things matter. Before we get started, have a sturdy chair at hand. And if you can bring the chair onto a non-slip mat, that'll make it a little bit more secure. And we will be bringing the chair to the wall for added um, safety um, later have your blocks, blankets, and uh, even a belt strip if you've got one available, cushions maybe if you haven't got any of that. that. And if you are really tight, um, or maybe you just want a gentler practice today, have another chair available. I'm using round chairs, not because they look prettier, but it's because I haven't got any square seated chairs without backs that are fit for purpose. The only one I've got is an antique chair that looks very pretty, but I don't think it would uh, do the job. So I'm using a round chair, but if you've got a square chair, it's probably a little bit uh, more practical for this purpose, but no excuses. So everything at hand before we Move, motivate and meditate together. So let's bring the bottom to the front of the chair seat so that both feet are grounded firmly on the floor. If you've got really short legs, you might even want to have blocks under the feet. Make sure the whole foot is grounded and not just the, the toes and the ball of the foot. Feel your evenly distributing weight between the sit bones with the front hip bones coming forward so that the pelvic bowl is level. Feet grounded evenly, whole foot grounded. Head balanced right over the heart with the heart lifting upwards towards the face. Feel the spine is long and aligned. Shoulders are relaxed. Breathe in, raise the arms out to the side and up. On the breath out, relax and lengthen the shoulders down. Breathe in, bend the arms at the elbows, cactus arms. Keep the arms and the forearms back. Breathe out, push the forearms forward and down towards the floor. Breathe in, up and over. On the breath out, bring the fingertips together, diamond arms above the head. Keep the arms and the elbows back. Breathing in, cactus arms. And on the next breath out, draw the elbows, forearms, palms towards center, keeping the chest lifted and the spine long. Breathing in, out to the side, cactus arms. Breathing out, push the arms forward and down. Breathing in, bring the forearms up and over. Breathing out, diamond arms keeping the arms back. Breathing in, back to that right angle position. 
breathing out. Elbows, forearms, palms together at center, spine long. Breathe in, open out to the side. Breathe out, forward and down. Breathe in, up and over. Breathe out, fingers together above the head. Breathe in, cactus arms. Breathe out, elbows, forearms, palms to center. Last time, breathe in, open wide. Breathe out, forward and down. Breathe in, up and over. Breathe out, fingers overhead. Breathe in, cactus arms. Breathe out, elbows, forearms, palms to center. Interlock the fingers, push the arms forward, plug the arms into the shoulder sockets and lift the chest, shoulders down. On the next breath in, push the outturned palms all the way up as far as you can without bending the elbows. If your neck's comfortable, follow the fingers with the eyes, but don't jam the neck. On the breath out, just lower those arms to shoulder level, change the interlock, bringing the opposite forefinger to the top of the pile. Turn the palms out again. Shoulders down, chest lifting, elbows locked. Breathe in, reach the arms up as you follow the fingers with the head. Don't go too high, don't lock don't unlock the elbows, keep them re really locked. Breathing out, release the arms all the way down, release the hands. Now, once more, just sit firm, checking that you've got that, that even distribution of weight between both feet and both legs, feet and legs hip width apart, toes tracking forward, heels pointing back. From the grounding in both feet and sit bones, breathe in, extend the spine up, lengthening the waist, opening the chest, and on the breath out, we're going to twist to the right. You can take the right arm to the back of the chair seat or the top of the chair back. The key is to get into a position that's comfortable and easy. Bring the left outer hand but the back of the left hand to the outer right knee, palm facing right. Breathe in, broaden the back and front of the chest. Breathe out, shoulders down as you turn your head to look over the right shoulder. Take a deep breath in, broadening and lengthening. Breathe out, turn the head all the way round to the left, keeping the chest lifted and the shoulders down. Breathe in. Plant the feet in the floor, lengthen up as you breathe out, rotate the head to look over the right shoulder. And on the next breath in, bring the spine back to center. Relax the shoulders down and just feel your, your postural alignment and your grounding at this stage. And on the breath in, get that length up from the grounding in feet and buttocks. And on the breath out, let's rotate to the left, bringing the left hand maybe to the back of the chair seat or maybe to the top of the chair back. Stay there, bringing the right, the back of the right hand onto the outer left knee. As you breathe in, extend the spine. Open the chest, breathing out, shoulders down. Turn the head to look over the left shoulder. Breathing in, extend up. Breathing out, shoulders down as you turn the head to look over the right shoulder. Don't jam the neck. Breathe in, feel that extension up. And on the breath out, rotate the head to look all the way over the left shoulder once more. And on the next breath in, let's bring the spine back to center. Staying towards the edge of the chair seat, sit up right now. Now, can you bring the pelvic bowl level? This is really important for the next hip stretch. 
keeping the pelvic bowl level so that the spine is long, so that the front body from the pubis to the throat can remain long. We're not going to compress this as we come forward later. Can you bring the left ankle to the top of the right thigh at the knee? Keep the heel pushing away and the left toes pulling towards the knee to switch on the shin. Open the knee and the shin and the thigh out, moving them down and out away from the trunk. Can you keep the spine long? Are you still on your sit bones? We're going to, if there's any stretch left, you can take hold of the left foot with the left hand and the right, the left knee with the right hand. And you can just encourage, give them a bit of resistance to encourage open, but don't yank and push. And then if there's stretch left, try leaning the whole spine forward and you're rotating the pelvis forward, bringing the pubis forward, bringing those front hip bones, rotating them towards the thighs. Rotate forward if you can. Just breathe there, you'll feel it deep in that left hip. Breathe here. And this stretch is often better held for a a few, a good few breaths, at least a minute, to get the stretch to move to the deeper layers of tissue, into the gluteal muscles and the piriformis. On the breath in, let's lift up. Let's lower that left foot down and sit up. And again, feel that you've got even distribution of weight. You might be feeling there's a very big difference between the two hips. Maybe the left hip feels open and alive suddenly and you're aware of it and the right hip hasn't got that energy flow. Let's correct that right now. Let's bring the outer right ankle to the top of the left thigh. Push into the heel so you pull the toes to, to the knee to switch on the shin because there's a link, a reflex link between the shin and the buttock muscles. And that's what we're targeting right now. Open that right knee out to the, the floor in front of you. And remember, there might be a very different feel between the two hips. So don't be surprised if um, this side is tighter. This is most people's dominant side. That might not be the case for you. Just go gently. Now, if the stretch left, remember we're moving the pelvic bowl forward. We're coming forward from the top of the legs. Start to tip forward. Yes, you can bring the hands down. You can even bring the forearms to rest on the shins. Keep that chest moving towards the shins. Don't let the navel pull into the body. Lengthen the trunk so you're not bending at the waist. You're not shortening the waist at the front. Keep the waist long. Stay here and breathe into that right hip and buttock. Feel it working at a very deep level, right down into the hip socket. Just breathe here, no force, no strain, keeping that length. And on the next breath in, just come up if you went forward and release that foot and just position yourself now with both feet wide. Can you bring the feet wider than the hips now? You can turn the feet out about 45 degrees. Lengthen up from the sit bones. Keeping the spine long, shoulders down, arms at the side of the trunk. Neck and head floating on top of the shoulders. Breathe in, reach the arms all the way up. Now we're going to hinge from the hips once more, just to a diagonal line of force. And as you breathe out, dive towards a diagonal, bringing the arms out at shoulder level, keeping a line of force through the chest and the arms, through the spine, neck and head. Breathe in, pull all the way up. Now, for some of you, you'll have to stay with the arms wide. For some of you, you might have to even bring your hands 
onto the top of the thighs to come forward. That's good. Don't strain. Breathe out. You're going to see, can you dive forward, keeping the arms in this line with the ears. Just angle forward, keeping the chest open and the front body long. You're not rounding the spine to do this. You're not dropping the head. Breathe in, pull all the way up. And on the breath out, just lean forward and see if you can bring the elbows to the top of the thighs without bending at the waist. We're hinging from the top of the hips and we're feeling those hip bones rotating forward towards the thighs. Keep the front body long. Now, if you feel that there's more stretch left, just, you might even want to edge the sit bones just back a tad, but keep the tailbone moving down to the chair seat. Now, can you, this is where blocks might be needed, or another chair in front of you might be needed. Can you bring the hands to the floor, the blocks, or a chair seat in front of you? How far can you come forward and down now? Just hanging forward. Just breathing here. Let the arms and the head be heavy. You can actually move the arms through the legs to take hold of the chair legs if you want, but don't pull yourself down. Just let the body surrender to gravity, keeping the tailbone rooting down towards the chair seat as you relax the whole of the trunk, the arms and the head forward. And on the next breath in, just roll the spine up. Let's bring our hands to the chair seat now and ground our feet on the floor. So our hands are under the chair, sh shoulders holding the sides of the chair seat and our legs and feet are under the hips. Legs vertical, arms vertical. Just keep the knees soft, sit bones lifting. And let's do the vibrancy flex in this position. As you breathe in, rotate the pelvis forward, arcing the spine, open the chest and look forward, tail up face forward. Breathe out, tuck the tail. Feel the navel pull up to the spine, rounding the spine as you pull the chin in. Breathe in, arc the spine to, towards the floor as the tail lifts and the face looks forward. Breathe out, tuck the tail, pull the chin in. Keeping the knees soft, do a few more rolls. Some of you might have to have the knees quite extensively bent to be able to get movement through the pelvis. And on the next breath in, come back to the first position with the spine long, the neck and head in line with the spine so that the face is looking at the chair. We're going to walk the legs back until the legs are vertical hips over ankles but you're still holding on to the chair seat. So you get a nice line of force from the wrists through to the outer hips with the neck and head in, in that line. Feel the length through both sides of the trunk. Now we're going to just bend both knees. As you bend the knees, lift those sit bones up. Feel you're able to tip the pelvis and bring that gentle arc into the lower back and as you breathe out slowly ground firmly into both feet as you straighten both legs. Let's do a few more of those. Breathing in, bend the knees, lift those sit bones, tip the pelvis. Breathing out, straighten both legs. Breathing in, bend both knees. Breathing out, straightening both legs. As you straighten the, the legs, did the spine hump up? You might need to keep them 
slightly bent. On the next breath in, you're going to bend one knee as you keep the other leg really straight. Just do a few, like a, a pedaling action this way. This is the chair dog down. Keep both feet grounded as you bend one leg. Keep the other straight and then switch. Just breathe there, feel the gentle twist on the spine as you rock from side to side. And then straightening both legs as best you can. We're going to try coming into a plank pose from here. As you breathe in, rock up onto the toes of both feet and can you angle forward until you come into the plank pose with the shoulders over the wrists, the arms vertical on that line of force through the body. Don't let the pelvis sag. You might have to adjust the distance of your feet to the chair. Breathe out slowly, strongly. Push up from the hands into the chair, dog down. Taking your pelvis up towards the ceiling and back behind you. This time we're going to try a chair dog up pose. Breathe in, rock up onto the toes and swoop through, bringing your pelvis as close to the edge of the chair seat as you can. Are the arms vertical, shoulders moving down, chest opening towards the back of the chair, face looking forward. And on the breath out, strongly, slowly push back into the chair dog down. Can you do a few of those dog up, dog down swoops? Let's have a go. Breathe in, rock right up onto the toes and swoop through. On the next breath out, strongly push up from the hands and push back. Dog down. Breathing in, swoop through. Dog up, are the shoulders down? Breathing out, push back, dog down. Once more if you can. Breathing in, swoop through, dog up. Can you pause here, moving the shoulders down, opening the chest to the back of the chair? Well done. And on the breath out, push back into that dog down position. Just pause here. You might have to bend the knees once more to lift the sit bones so that the back body is flat as you do with your dog down. This is that dog up and dog down and the plank pose with the chair is fantastic for building strength. And a lot of people who can't do it with the floor due to weight bearing issues with wrists or elbows or shoulders can actually do it more comfortably with a chair. Let's move into a standing position now. So you might have to stride a foot forward to be able to come up comfortably out of this pose. Let's stand with the chair to our right side. I want you to stand in that perfect postural alignment with the centre of the chair seat centred on the, the body. And we're going to bring our right foot to the chair seat, hopefully opening it out in line with the left leg. Turn the toes to look at the back of the chair. The ideal is to have the knee over the ankle the knee in line with the hip. And can you feel in this position how the body wants to rotate to the right towards that leg? Now we're going to bring a twist into the trunk. Bring the back of the right hand to the inner knee and rotate the body at the waist. You're not letting that right knee push forward. It will want to. You're using the right hand to feel that it stays back. You're not necessarily pushing it back. You're just giving it a little bit of resistance so it doesn't just push forward. Rotate the trunk round. Feel 
that the ears are over the shoulders or over the hips or over that standing left ankle. Now, as you breathe in, raise the left arm out to the left, palm facing up. Now, without letting that right knee push forward, if there's stretch left, as you breathe in, let's pulse the arm further back behind us. Breathing out, come back to that shoulder level line. Breathe in, pulse back, opening through the hips. Breathe out, coming back. Breathe in, pulse back, breathe out, open back. Bring that left hand onto the hip and bring your right elbow to the top of the right thigh. Keep that right knee back now. Knee over ankle, just check your position. Open your left shoulder on top of the right, opening the chest. Turn your face to look up, but tuck the chin in towards the left armpit. Breathe in, reach the left arm up, turn the palm to look right. And on the next breath out, can you angle over that arm over to bring a diagonal line of force from the fingers through to the left hip? Breathe in and out here, stretching through that side, rotating the trunk and the face up to the ceiling. Any distress in the neck, look forward, never strain the neck. And on the next breath in, just bring that left arm to the vertical. Now, if the stretch left, slide the right hand down towards the shin or the ankle or the chair seat. You might even have a block at the foot or the inner ankle to bring the hand onto. Keep the arm, the right arm, encouraging that right knee and thigh back. Tuck the tail, rotate the trunk up. How much can you breathe and open? It's just adding more stretch. And on the next breath in, let's pull back to the vertical. And you can either turn yourself round so you bring your left leg to the chair seat or turn your chair round. Let's bring, just pause to feel both feet grounding in that perfect postural alignment, mountain pose, before bringing the left foot to the chair seat, turning the toes to look directly at the back of the chair seat and bringing the heel in line with the right leg. Knee ideally should be in line with the right hip or the left hip. Taking the knee back, bringing the back of the left hand to the back of the knee. Keeping the left knee moving back, don't yank it though. Rotate at the trunk so you bring the chest to look forward. Ears over shoulders, over hips, over standing ankles. Open that right arm out to the right, palm facing up, thumb pointing back. If there's more stretch left, breathe in, open the arm further back behind you, following the hand with the face. Breathe out, come back to shoulder level. Breathe in, open back. Breathe out, come back to shoulder level. Breathe in, open back. Breathe out, come back to shoulder level. Bring the left hand on, sorry, the right hand onto the hip as you bring the left elbow down to the top of the right knee. Again, rotate your trunk. Don't let the trunk ro rotate to the floor. Rotate it up to the ceiling, turning the, the face and head if the neck's comfortable to do so, to look up. Keep it looking forward if that feels too strong on the neck. Tuck the chin in towards the chest so that the back of the neck remains long. Now, bring that right arm up and turn the palm to look left. Take a deep breath in here and on the breath out, reach it over in a diagonal line of force, stretching from the right fingers, right through the sides of the trunk into the outer right hip. Feel, ground into that right foot. Grounding down the outer leg into the outer foot. Breathe. Now on the next breath in, bring that arm back up to the vertical line of force. 
And can you start to move your left hand down the shin towards the ankle or the chair seat or a block if you want to use a block. Keep the chest rotating up to the ceiling so you're not collapsing down in this. Keep that opening in the chest as you look up on the inside of that arm if the neck's willing, that right arm. And on the next breath in, let's pull all the way up. Lower the arms down, lower the foot down. Now we're going to turn to look at the chair seat. Now we're going to do a, a leg stretch now, a hamstring stretch. So everybody's got different degrees of stretch in the hamstrings. So some of you, the chair seat's going to be more than adequate, more than enough height. Some of you might need to bring one block on top of the chair seat to bring the heel on to some two blocks some the blocks and the blankets for others the back of the chair seat will be absolutely fine to bring the foot and leg onto if you are using the back of the chair seat you might want to bring up that blanket to take off any sharp uncomfortable edges find a position that's right for you Bring your foot to whatever height is comfortable. And then when you've found a position where you are you can stand with the, the standing leg vertical and the raised leg at a height that's comfortable, bring both feet to the floor and stand with that perfect postural alignment, mountain pose, facing the chair with the feet and legs a little bit. But let's actually bring them closer than hip width apart just a few centimetres apart, anchoring into both feet. With both feet grounded, toes tracking forward, heels pointing back, pelvic bells level, waist is long, chest is lifted. Feel that your ears are over the shoulders, are over the hips, are over the ankles. We're going to raise the right leg up in a moment, but when you raise it up, I want you to feel how the left foot might want to turn out to the side for balance as much as anything that your pelvic bell might want to tip forward that your body might want to tip forward i want you to see can you keep the hips level the pelvic bow level and the body in this alignment raise that right leg up onto the surface and then just feel Maybe the surface is too high if you've got to bend one or both knees. Maybe if the hip won't, that right hip won't relax down, maybe you need to lower the surface, bring the hips level. Don't let that left foot turn out to the left, it might want to. Keep the chest looking forward, ears over the shoulders, over the hips, over the standing ankle. Breathe in. Keeping the chest lifted, reach up from the grounding in that left foot, raising the arms up. Keeping that chest lifted and the spine long, pelvic bow level. Reach into both feet. You're pushing out into the right foot, pulling the toes towards you if you can, pushing down into the left foot. Now, as you breathe out, let's twist to the right, bring the navel round to the, the right as you turn the head to look down the upturned right palm. Maybe you've got to bring that right hand onto the hip to balance. Maybe you've got to bring it onto another chair or a wall to balance. Breathe in, pull back to centre. And on the breath out, we're going to see can we tip forward anymore? Some of you will be at your absolute peak, but some of you may have a little bit more stretch, bringing the hands down the leg, maybe to hold the ankle or the foot, maybe to hold the back of the chair seat. Don't force. Breathe in, let's pull up. Lower the arms down, lower the leg down. Give both legs a bit of a kick flick shake. And then ground both legs, let the arms flail. Just release any tension 
And then let's come back to that perfect postural alignment so we can bring our left leg up to the chair seat. And remember, one leg might have a lot of more stretch or less stretch in it than the other. So you may have to adjust your surface. From that perfect postural alignment, stand firm. Don't have the feet too wide. I want you to raise the left foot up onto the, the chair. Keeping the right foot grounded, the left hip level with the right. Don't let that left hip ride up. You don't want to shorten the left side of the waist. Keep it long. Keep a push into both feet so that the legs are straight. Keep the ears over the shoulders, over the hips, over the ankle. Can you, does that right foot want to flip out to the side? Steer it forward. On the next breath in, reach both arms up. Keep the shoulders moving down. From this position, reach out from center, out into that left leg down into the right leg, up into both arms. Feel that reach out from center. And on the breath out, let's twist to the left, turning the head to look down the left arm. It's okay to bring that left hand onto the waist and even bring the, this, sorry, the right hand, the left hand onto the waist and the right hand onto the leg. If balance is more available here. Breathe in, let's pull back to center. Now again, for some of you, you're at your peak. Just stay here and breathe if you can. If there is more stretch, you can start to tip the pelvic bowl forward over the top of the legs. Remember, you're not rounding at the waist. The spine stays long, the front body stays long. The pelvic bowl tips the hip bones rotate towards the inner thigh. And then breathing in, pull up, lower those legs down. And once more, give the legs a kick, flick shape before grounding them and then rotating the arms. Get rid of any tension. And then come to a position where your right leg's forward just below the front of the chair seat, between the chair legs, and your left leg is back. So you want your feet and legs hip width apart for, for, for this, with the outer ankles and feet in line with the outer hips. Bring the hips round and hinge forward so that the arms are holding the chair seat. So you might have to adjust the distance. And again, the wider you have the legs, the the the, um, the more stretch you'll get through the legs. Just rotate. We've done this many times in this series, but this is a chair variation. Bring the buttocks so that they're parallel with the bottom of the mat, the back of the pelvis parallel with the ceiling, and the front of the pelvis parallel with the floor. You want equal length through both sides of the trunk. Just breathe here. Now, maybe you can come down onto your elbows. Or maybe you can bring the hands to the back of the chair. Just extending a little bit further if that's possible. Maybe you can even bring the head to rest on the back of the hands. And then when you're ready, come back to the straight arm position and we're actually going to bend the left arm at the elbow. You might not be able to bring the, the forearm down to the chair seat. You might just need to be able to bring the left hand to the center of the chair seat because we're going to rotate to the right, lifting our right shoulder on top of the left. We're revolving triangle position with the chair. Let's lengthen through the spine. Let's turn the head if that's, if you're able to, to bring the twist right into the neck and head. And if you're balanced, 
bring that left that right arm up towards the ceiling breathe into to this keeping length through the trunk remember we always want to be twisting a, a long extended spine and on the breath out let's lower down and let's switch so that we bring the left leg forward and the right leg back holding both sides of the chair seat and just feeling for that perfect postural alignment the outer feet in line with the outer hips the legs nice and straight but not um, hyper extended bringing weight into both feet evenly back and front foot in the into the inner and outer edge of the foot spine long hips steer that outer left hip and buttock back as you steer the outer right hip forward so that the back of the buttocks are parallel with the back of the mat just lengthen here maybe you can come a bit lower maybe you can reach the arms and extend them to the back of the chair stay comfortable and breathe now we're going to rotate maybe bring the the right hand to the center of the chair seat bring the left hand onto the outer left hip as you start to rotate round to the left bringing that right forearm down if that's possible left shoulder on top of the right spine long neck and head in line with spine if you can you can either look forward or turn the head to look up don't jam the neck if it's possible reach that left arm up breathe and feel a line of force through the arms and the chest through the spine neck and head down through both legs breathe here keeping the spine long and open and on the next breath in straighten both arms Stride that back foot forward and just come up. Ground the feet on the floor. And again, let's let the arms flail before coming back to centre and shaking the legs. We've done it in reverse this time. Coming back to centre. Okay, we're going to stand now with our toes lined up with the, the chair leg that's closest to you with the left side of the body to the chair uh, seat. Feet and legs hip width apart. Now, can you bring your left foot onto the chair seat, turning the foot and leg out from the hip about 45 degrees? Now, this is where you might need another chair in front of you if you're very tight in the hips to get the best stretch from this and the most comfortable stretch from this. Because what we're going to do now is we're going to hinge forward. With that left leg turned out at the hip, we're going to come forward into a forward bending position, hanging over the top of the leg. This is where blocks or in front of you or another chair seat might be, make it more comfortable so you can stay here and breathe. Just breathe here. Keep that left knee, knee steering back in line with the three middle left toes. Don't let it pull in and it wants to. Be comfortable, let the upper body be heavy. Just hanging over. You're coming forward between the legs with the centre line of the trunk centred on the pelvis. Keeping weight into both feet evenly through the foot that's grounded on the chair and the foot that's grounded on the floor. Relaxing the muscles through the back body. Relaxing the belly. Breathing. And on the next breath out just roll the spine up let's either turn the body so that you're the other way round 
I'll bring the chair the, to the opposite side. And let's line up the toes with the chair leg that's next to you and bring the right foot onto the chair seat, turning the foot and leg out about 45 degrees. Again, position blocks or chair or whatever you need for a comfortable forward bend in front of you. Take a deep breath in here and on the breath out, fold forward, coming over the top of the legs, steering that right knee back in line with the three middle toes. Don't let the knee pull forward and it wants to. Stay here, allowing the back of the body to be really soft and open. Be heavy. Feel where the resistance is and breathe towards it. Don't force. Don't pull yourself forward. Let gravity bring you forward. And if that's where, if it is too strong, having the hands and arms supported on another chair seat or the blocks might just take that extra tug off. Just breathe here, be easy. And on the breath out, let's roll up. Now we're going to do an expanded leg pose where we come forward onto the chair. Some of you are really tight in the legs and that's not a problem, but you might choose to have the chair, the back of the chair seat to you with a blanket on the back of the chair seat to bring the forehead onto. Some of you might just need a bolster or blankets or your blocks raised up on the chair seat because the chair seat might be a bit too low for you. But let's take the legs either side of the chair and have what surface you, you need on. If you've got a bolster that's a, a great uh, surface. Um, you can even bring your bolster on top of your blocks if you've got them. Be creative and find a surface that's right for you. With the, the legs wide and the toes tracking forward and the heels pointing back, just stand firm, keeping weight back in the legs. You're not going to be angling the legs forward in this. I see this all the time in this pose. Keep the hips over the line of the ankles. Anchor into both feet, grounding from the outer hip down to the outer edge of the foot, lifting from the inner ankle up into the inner groin. Feel the direction of energy in the legs. But although you're lifting from the inner ankle, keep the inner ball and big toe and heel pressing firmly into the ground. Now, hinge forward over the top of the legs and bring one hand on top of the other, elbows wide to the surface. Coming into the pose. Again, I want you to be comfortable so you can relax here and breathe here and open here. So do adjust, take some time to get a surface that's right for you so that you can hold it comfortably and feel the body open and release as you breathe. Keeping the forehead grounded is very relaxing for the spine. So make sure that head can ground comfortably so that the shoulders can relax down, so that the neck and the shoulders can release. Breathing and feeling the opening through the front of the chest and the armpits. Feel that length through the spine, from the front face, from the pubis to the throat, through both sides of the trunk from the hips to the armpits from the tail to the crown feel the whole spine is long and open are the hips still over the ankles are the legs as straight as they can be there should be no tension in the inner knees bring the legs closer or micro bend the knees as much as you need to to iron out any tension no need strain just staying here and breathing here. 
you might be able to creep the legs a little bit wider if you've created space. You might be able to bring the trunk a little bit lower if you were quite high up. Just staying here to breathe. And on the next breath in, let's open back. You might want to heel toe the feet a little bit closer together before lifting the body up. Well done. We're going to come into a supported bridge pose position now. So if you have blocks, bring your blocks or a bolster in front of the chair seat. You might want just your blocks, you might want blocks and a blanket, you might want a couple of firmer pillows or cushions under the back of the pelvis. And we're going to bring the pelvis the back of the pelvis onto the cushions in front of the chair seat or the surface in front of the chair seat and take the legs over. So again, you might need to adjust how far or how close the, the, the surface is to the chair for a comfortable position. The back of the pelvis should be completely supported, but the ribs free. Arms out to shoulder level. Feel that the front body is open, the chest is open, the diaphragm, that mushroom shaped breathing muscle below the ribs, is able to expand fully and deeply. It's got free movement. And just let yourself settle here with the legs and feet hip width apart, completely relaxed over the back of the chair. Pelvis supported, shoulders relaxing down, neck long. Lower the gaze and close the eyes. And just come to the breath. Tuning in to that gentle wave action. Feeling the expansion of the breath in the contraction back of the breath out, feeling the ebb and the flow, the in and the out. Surrendering to gravity with each breath out. Stay with the breath. Stay in the body. Maybe it might be nice to bring the soles of the feet together and bring them towards the edge of the chair seat. And again, if it's a hard chair, a folded blanket to that chair edge might just be more comfortable. Letting the knees float wide. Just be here, allowing the legs to be heavy. Letting gravity do the opening as you surrender to gravity and let go. With each breath out, give yourself to the earth. Let yourself be completely heavy. Let the chair and the surfaces support you, the floor and those blocks or cushions. On the next breath in, bring the legs together if you took them wide. Bring the legs over the chair. We're going to lift the pelvis up so we can release the blocks from under the pelvis, lowering the pelvis down to the floor now. Bend the knees towards the chest, take hold of the shins. Draw those thighs towards you without jamming the front of the pelvis or the, the belly. Gently rocking from side to side. 
and then bring the feet to the floor and open the arms back to shoulder level and let's just do a gentle rolling twist breathing in roll the knees to the right as you turn your head to the left breathing out roll the knees to the left as you turn your head to the right breathe and roll and twist and feel how does your spine your hips your chest feel at the end of this session. On the next breath in, bring the knees back to centre and you can choose to bring your legs over the chair to relax or just lie on the floor. But come into a position where you can relax for at least three to five minutes, longer if you've got the time. Always longer if you've got the time. And let the body assimilate what's happened during the practice. Just let yourself settle. Let yourself go. Bringing the focus in to scan the body at the start of your relaxation. And to stay with the body feeling body and mind relaxing. Can you gently, gently stay with this process with nothing to do or undo, with nothing to achieve and nothing missing? So the next time you're looking at a chair or sitting on a chair, think about how that chair can be used to open up the body and bring a bit more balance. Namaste, dear ones. Sending so much love. And remember, before the next viral video, two stretches every waking hour. <laughs>